Welcome to the February 9th, your number 32 edition of WWMS. I am Chase Coburn, later joined by our geopolitical friend Arif Kapoor and soccer fanatic Noah. And we have many topics to break down to all of you, including Super Bowl Sunday, Valentine's Day, and my interview with longtime actor, producer, singer, and more, Kehan Miller. But first, let's start off with our joke of the week. What do you call a boomerang that does not come back? A stick. We hope you all got some enjoyment out of that very funny joke. This is a great episode, though, because there are many amazing things to break down. The first of which we will break down is Super Bowl Sunday. This Sunday night is the NFL championship game between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers, with the winner being crowned Super Bowl champions. Super Bowl 58 will take place in Las Vegas, with many keys and twists that could go into effect. First, the rushing game. Both of these teams thrive on their running offense with running backs and smart mobile quarterbacks combined with potent run defenses on the other side. The 49ers have perhaps the most talented skill position player in the league, running back Christian McCaffrey, who is a unanimous first-team All-Pro selection. As for Kansas City, their running game is okay with Isaiah Pacheco, but defensively just held one of the top rushing attacks in football in Baltimore just to just 81 yards in their AFC Championship win. The battle of rushing games will be crucial. Secondly, it will be how both teams start. Kansas City has come out firing in all of their postseason games thus far, while San Francisco has done the exact opposite. Yet they're both here in the final game. We'll see which one gets the job done. Kansas City has been so dominant early in the game that teams haven't been able to keep up. For San Francisco, they've proven, though, that when down and out of the game, they can come back, like when they won in the NFC Championship game after down 17 in the second half to Detroit. We'll see which one defines the game. And third, it's the battle of quarterbacks. The 49ers have a quarterback in Brock Purdy, but he's surrounded with as much talent as any quarterback has ever been surrounded with, and it seems his success may be because of his teammates. Patrick Mahomes, on the other hand, a two-time MVP and two-time Super Bowl champion, could single-handedly change the game because he's an all-time great and, by a consensus vote, the best team, the best player in football. Which will do better on Sunday? Personally, I think KC will win the Super Bowl for the second straight season and the third time in the past half decade in a really tight matchup because they have Patrick Mahomes and San Fran doesn't. But be sure to check out the Cool Sports Network and Chase the Sports News YouTube channel for content and previews of the contest over the weekend. Let's get some love and joy in our lives. Let's go to Aura for a segment on one of the more lovable holidays, Valentine's Day. What's up, dudes? Next Wednesday, February 14th, 2024, is Valentine's Day. Although Valentine's Day is known as a holiday for pink hearts and exchanging gifts, it has a slightly darker past. It is said that in ancient Rome, under the empire and the rule of Emperor Claudius II, Rome struggled to enlist men to enroll in the army. Because of this, Claudius thought that the men were unwilling to join the army because of their attachment to their wives and families. So Claudius banned all marriages and attachments to wives and families. Rumor has it that Roman holy priest St. Valentine did not agree with this rule and started hidden, having hidden relationships. When his actions were discovered, Claudius wished for him to be put to death. The prefect of Rome condemned him to be killed in a rather brutal way on the 14th day of February in the year 207. It is said that while awaiting his execution in his cell, he wrote a note to his jailer's daughter and signed it, from your valentine. It is said that this is why we have continued this tradition of writing valentines to each other. Legend has it that this holiday was connected to romance when the Feast of Lupercalia, a pagan holiday in which women's names were put into a box and drawn by men to find true love, associated with St. Valentine's death, since they happened to fall on the same day. Realistically, the exact origins of Valentine's Day are, un- are unclear, but the Catholic Encyclopedia has determined that there could have been at least three different St. Valentines, a priest in Rome, a bishop in a small town of Italy, and one being a martyr from the Roman province of Africa, each with their own long story tying them in with this holiday, which I will not bore you with. Many twists and turns later in the meaning of this holiday, the celebration of Valentine's Day exploded into American pop culture in the 1840s and is still thriving today. But on that note, you guys know the drill. Peace out, dudes! Now let's dive into our soccer news. Pretty recently, FC Barcelona's manager, Xavi Hernandez, announced he was going to be stepping down as Barcelona's manager. It had taken Pep Guardiola four years to throw in the towel, Luis Enrique three years before calling it a day, and Xavi was in charge for only two years before leaving. He announced he was leaving after Barca's 5-3 defeat against Villarreal at home. 
They had a horrible January, losing to Madrid in the Spanish Supercopa Finals and getting knocked out of the Copa del Rey by Athletic Club. Sources say he's leaving the club due to him being fed up with the toxicity of the Barca environment, which not only affected him, but apparently also had consequences for his family. Let's hope Barca doesn't fall apart with whoever they choose to manage the club. Now let's head into the interview this week. I got to sit down with an actor, producer, director, singer, and so much more, Kihan Miller, who talked about his career in acting and how he helps shape the next generation of actors. Uh, I met uh, Kenny through a acting camp that I did over the summer here in Fairfield, Connecticut, uh, OPG. And I know you mentioned there how much you love kind of like teaching the next generation of actors. So that's kind of a question to you. Like how much of a priority is it to kind of be a mentor and help shape uh, these next generation of actors? That is an excellent, again, another great point you brought up, Chase. The Thank It you. is one of my top priorities. I'm from a family of teachers. Wherever I go, I my greatest blessing in my life were my mentors, were my, my teachers. I always wanted to pay them back. And every time I would try to do something extra for them, every one of them would say, pay it forward. I, I personally believe teaching is the most important job in our society. And I think teachers should be the highest paid job, even more than doctors, more than attorneys, more than anyone. Because if you did, you'd have the, the most elite people wanting to do that. Now, let's kind of transition to kind of the big film you've been having right now. And that is uh, the re your recent short film that, as you mentioned, Oscar qualified ink and gold. And it was, uh, it's a great story. What was kind of like your role in that kind of how you created it and all that? Well, Zakia was a student at Massey and we met. And so first I came in, he just started asking me for advice. So I was mentoring him some. He was an athlete. He was a field hockey player. He, he traveled all over the world and his dream wow. was to win an Olympic, an Olympic gold, but they never had field hockey in the Olympics until one day they got called when they were in China, they got called to the school saying, your son's going to win an award. And they thought it was going to be the sport award and it wasn't, and he won the art award. So he trying to figure out how to mix art with sport. He thought, well, why can't we do both? So he started combining his field hockey. He would dip balls in ink and he started using the stick to paint paintings, huge paintings. And then he did it with a skateboard, but he would put the two together. There was a medal competition for the Olympics. People don't realize this. Every Olympic golds, every Olympics, the medals are designed by different artists. And for the youth Olympics, they want youth to design it as a competition. And he designed it and won. So he went there, he was awarded the Olympic medals, all three by Thomas Bach, the head of the IOC. And then he got to perform in the opening ceremony and it led to him filming this. So he had all this footage, but he was a tiny little team of students. And in a year, year and a half later, he said, would you please help me? So I came on and took over as editor. And then I became the lead producer because I said to him, what is your biggest dream for this? And most people would say with a student film, oh, if I can get it at this little festival. But Zakia said, why not dream for the Oscars? I don't know that we'll get there, but why not dream? And I said, kid, I like you. I helped him. I did this whole festival strategy. We've been in, I don't even know how many countries around the world. We've been official selection to 81 film festivals now. We've won 72 awards, including 42 best film awards, best short wow. doctoral awards. And then we qualified for Oscar consideration. And so now it's being developed into a docu-series and we're negotiating with a couple of the big guys, Netflix, Amazon, Red Bull, that type of thing. But this, he just had this passion that reminded me of when I was a young man. And so it made me want to jump on. You can find the full interview on the Cool Sports Network, found on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Now let's head into rapid fire segments. 60 seconds and ticket. Last weekend was the Grammys, the award show for musical artists, songs, albums, etc. And it was safe to say it was interesting. There were many performances from artists you probably know, like Olivia Rodrigo, Miley Cyrus, Billy Joel, a tribute to Tina Turner, etc. For some awards, Taylor Swift took home her 13th and 14th Grammys, including her fourth album of the year award, and Miley Cyrus won a Grammy for her song Flowers. It was a very entertaining night. It was reported earlier last week that MetLife Stadium will be hosting the 2026 World Cup Final. MetLife Stadium, the sporting arena and concert venue in East Rutherford, New Jersey, is the home to the New York Giants and Jets professional football teams. Well, they will be hosting the International Football Championship in two years as the World Cup is going to be played in the U.S. for the first time since 1994. 
in some local news, Haven Hot Chicken is soon to come to Fairfield, Connecticut, as well as stores in Oxford and Newington later in the year. Haven Hot Chicken is a Connecticut chain that sells Nashville hot style chicken. The company already has locations in stores, Norwalk, New Haven, and other places. They are making a goal to open 25 stores by 2025 with their quote unquote crispy, crunchy, juicy, spicy, and delicious chicken. Now let's head into our trivia this week. We didn't have as many responses for last week's trivia. Come on, people! Scan the QR code here at the top of the screen and participate in our trivia. How many MVPs has Patrick Mahomes won? How long was Pep Guardiola the manager for Barcelona? When was the previous time the U.S. hosted the World Cup? When was Valentine's Day first celebrated in the U.S.? Also, be sure to check out our Inside the Woods episode about the counselors here at the Fairfield Woods Middle School YouTube channel for National School Counseling Week. Be sure to check it out and see what our school counselors had to say about their job and what they enjoy most about it. We hope you guys enjoyed the February 9th or number 32 edition of WWMS. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to participate in our trivia and check out our number four Inside the Woods out on the Fairfield Woods Middle School YouTube channel. Thanks so much to a great behind the scenes crew alongside Noah and Arav. Signing off for Fairfield Woods Middle School, I am Chase Cooper and we'll see you next Friday. Hans Miller, how many MVPs does Patrick Mahomes have? All right, guys, camera's on. Action. All right, now this is Noah's. So no, 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 don't end it, don't end it, don't end it. Now we go to Noah's soccer segment. No, no, just stay there. We can keep going. Now let's head into rapid fire segments. Oh, we need a clock. You just leave the stapler right there. Leave the stapler. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do action and leave the stapler there. Action. No, I'm doing the tag. Don't even. All right, let's go.